So how to permanently lose weight and how to finally start building muscle and overall how to transform your physique into something that you've always wanted. If you stick around till the end of this video, which isn't gonna even be a long video, then I promise you, you're gonna have those answers and you're gonna have a direction on what you need to do in order to start getting those results and more. <laughs> So first things first, your nutrition. You have to eat in a calorie deficit when it comes to weight loss, okay? It doesn't matter what you're eating. You obviously wanna eat lower dense nutritious foods, but you want to be eating in a caloric deficit. You always have to be eating in a caloric deficit. It doesn't matter if it's keto, it doesn't matter if it's carnivore, it doesn't matter if it's paleo, it doesn't matter what you eat, okay? You need to be in a deficit. You have to take in less food, for you to start dropping weight and get more movement, to expend more energy. That is literally the basis of it all. Now, how do you know how to get in a deficit? That's the question I get all the time too. What you need to do is you need to track what you eat on a regular basis for one week. You have to do that for one week, okay? This is gonna be the most accurate way to do it. For one week, you're gonna track what you eat, you're gonna track what time of the day you eat it at, what day you're gonna even track what you put in those foods. If you have a hot dog, how much relish, mustard, whatever you add in there. If you have a hamburger, if you have a pizza, what's on the pizza. Find out exactly what you eat. You can even use MyFitnessPal to do this. It's very easy to do. You download the app, they have a free version. You can start putting everything in there. It actually breaks it down nicely for you and gives you your macros as well. And you're gonna track that for one whole week. You're gonna eat regularly. Don't try and screw around with it and actually refrain from eating certain foods that you would have eaten before because you need to be honest with yourself. After that week, you're gonna take the calories that you've calculated for each day of the week, okay? And then you're gonna add them up all together. And it's gonna give you a total caloric intake for that week. Then you're gonna divide it by seven because it's seven days. And then that is going to give you the average of what you are eating roughly every day. And then what you need to do is, you need to eat anywhere between three to 500 calories under that. So either 300 to 500, roughly around there because everybody's a little bit different, there is no exact amount and some people will find it a bit harder than others when it comes to their energy loss. Some people will be able to do better on a 500 caloric deficit versus others. That's up to you to play around with and for you to understand and for you to do. But what you're gonna do is you're going to subtract that from the total amount, okay? And then you're gonna factor in your exercises, which is what we'll get into a little bit later. But that's roughly what you wanna stay around in order to start losing weight. A good amount of weight loss is anywhere between 0.5 pounds to two pounds a week. And I know it doesn't even sound like a lot, but it's actually a good means of how you should be losing weight. Anything higher than that is of course still possible, depending on how much uh, of a decrease you're in, of how much of a caloric deficit you're in when it comes to your weight. But for some people, they wouldn't be able to handle that, especially for somebody who's new to weight loss and hasn't done this before. And then on top of that, what's your total daily expenditure? How much are you actually moving throughout the day? What movement are you doing? Anything from basically walking to the grocery store or moving around in your job if you have a hard laborer's job, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different factors, but those are the main ones. And if you're not already getting a lot of movement and you haven't been for a while, well, you, it's, it's pretty safe to say your metabolic rate is gonna be a little bit slower and you need to give it time to pick up. But nonetheless, that's what you wanna stick towards because this whole game of weight loss and even gaining muscle, which I'll get to in a little bit, is a consistent factor of consistently being in action and doing it week after week and not stopping. So now when it comes to the foods and what foods you should be eating, as I was saying, just to keep it simple and for you to understand, higher protein diets are better. You generally will feel a bit more full on them. You're still going to have hunger spurts here and there because you're always going to be in a caloric deficit, right? Including the weekends. You want to always try and stay under that number and you're going to feel at times hungry. Some people find it a little bit harder than others. Again, it really does depend on the individual. But you wanna circle around your macros, which makes up your total calories, at around 50% protein, 30% carbs, and 20% fats. 
You can mix those around a bit, it's completely up to you. Just keep proteins on the higher end, I would suggest you do that. And what foods you eat, again, it's completely up to you. As long as you're staying below that number, as we talked about earlier, and within that number, you're getting those macros hit, your numbers hit, then you're okay. And just as an example, let's say your number, your total caloric number for the day is 1700 calories. For those 1700 calories, it's going to be 50% protein, 30% carbs, 20% fats. And it could be whatever foods that you enjoy at the end of the day, right? Have lower dense, higher nutritional foods. They are healthier for you. They're going to be better for you and it will help with your weight loss down the road. But again, it is up to you. As long as you stay below that number, then you're going to lose the weight. So when it comes to your exercise, let's keep it simple, but you can do a wide range of variety of things. But what I like to do when it comes to somebody who's trying to lose weight, I will get to building muscle in a little bit. When it comes to somebody who's losing weight, you want more movement in the beginning. Your focus is more of weight loss, okay? So if you're doing more movement, you're getting your total daily expenditure up during the day, amazing. For your workouts, minimum three times a week. When you do three times or more in a week, you're more on a structured schedule. You are more likely to stay on it and to keep doing it as well. And what you want to do is you want to have more of movement type of weighted exercises. And what I mean by that is you still want to incorporate doing like squats, lunges, bicep uh, curls, even doing deadlift or like squats to like shoulder presses, compound movements of that nature, which is great. You want to do exercises such as that, but more in a circuit style training. And I'm going to have a um, example for download in the description that I'm going to put together. I would encourage you though, to start building your own exercises and do it yourself. Use what I have as a template. You could use it if you like to. It won't work for every single person because you have to understand everybody comes from a different walk of life. There's different injuries that people can have, whatever power output they have, how much weight they have on them can be a factor to even if they can do certain exercises, how much energy they have during the day. Like there's a lot of different things that can factor into if they can do an exercise or not. But nonetheless, it'll be there for you to use and also use as a template. Take out certain exercises if you have to, put others in and utilize it and do it week after week, three times a week and keep at it. Another thing that I'm gonna suggest for people to do now, whether you're doing weight loss or if you're doing, or, or if you're strictly building muscle or even both is a little bit of cardio. And every time I say that word, people get upset and they're like, well, do I have to really do cardio in order to get results? Is it really needed? No, it's not needed, but if you're somebody who's finally losing the weight or finally trying to put on muscle, because yes, you can use it when leaning out or even utilize it when you're putting on muscle, do it because it's going to help you. Don't complain now that you have to do cardio when it's come down to the fact of you not doing what you needed to do all these years in order to get in shape. All you need to do is add a little bit of cardio a few times a week, or you can even add it in with, within your exercise routines like I do. As an example, after I do a set of, let's say, arms one day, if I have biceps and triceps, I add in skipping or I add in light running on my treadmill or even just ball slams to get the heart rate up for about 30 seconds to a minute. You don't have to do that long. You work to what you can handle, but that's what I do. But what it does is it elevates my heart rate. It's keeping me in a zone of having a higher heart rate and burning more calories as I continue to work out, as I continue to do my session and workout and it's gonna allow me to be able to get my cardio for the week. You don't have to sit there on a treadmill and just run at a certain pace for an hour. If you like doing that, that's even better good for you. I don't like to do that myself, but I know that doing cardio is not just about staying lean and breaking down body fat, but it's good for your heart. There's been plenty of studies to show that it increases your lifespan over time. So adding in is gonna be beneficial for you and it's also gonna increase your energy and it's also gonna allow your breathing to be better and you're just gonna feel better all around on top of that. So I would highly suggest you add that in. You're literally gonna take this plan for weight loss and you're going to keep doing it week after week. You're not gonna stop. A lot of people fall off and then they don't get the results they want because of that. You need to stay consistent with it. And you'll notice even with your exercises, you're slowly going to push more and more and more every week. At the end of the month, you're going to start increasing your reps. You're going to start increasing your time. You're going to start changing exercises to keep challenging you more and more because you need growth. You can't stay sedentary like you did all this time, which allowed your weight to get to where it is. You have to keep moving and you have to get stronger. And then eventually you're going to add another day. Do you have to? No, but why not challenge yourself even further and see what you can do if your body 
can handle it, which is the most important thing. So if you're somebody who strictly just wants to build muscle and you don't care for weight loss, people who are wanting to lose weight can add this in too, but generally speaking, they don't have the power output or the strength yet to do it. However, if you're somebody who just wants to build muscle, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do a split routine for the whole week. Minimum three days a week, whether it's doing arms together or biceps and shoulders together, or whether it's going to be doing chest and biceps together, whatever, you're gonna pair up the muscle groups, okay? And you're gonna pair them up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your abdominal exercises on two of those days and then core on another day. And then all you're going to do for cardio is add in a few of the routines I had mentioned earlier when talking about the weight loss phase. You're gonna add in either skipping or you're gonna add in something like battle ropes or you're gonna add in something like ball slams or you're gonna do uh, knee raises or high knees, whatever the case is. If you can't handle those types of movements because they're too high impact, then do some low impact movements where you're just doing fast squats, you're doing side to side toe touches, something that's gonna be low impact for you to handle, especially if you have joint issues. Just listen to your body and work with what you can handle. Now, when you're performing the exercises, as an example, let's say you're doing a bicep curl, you need to control the tempo. You wanna control the tempo to put more tension on the muscle. And for now, all you're gonna do is this. There's a lot of other techniques that you can do, but to keep it simple, this is what you're gonna do. The first, three reps. You're going to do three seconds up and then three seconds down and then three seconds up again and then three seconds down. And you're going to do that for three reps. And then after those three reps, you're going to move a little bit faster. You're going to get full extension of the arm going all the way up with the bicep curl and then all the way down and extending it fully. And you're going to go for as many reps as you can. I don't want you to stop at 10. I don't want you to stop at 12. You should be aiming for 15 plus. If you get to 12 and it's hard and you need to stop because of the amount of tension and lactic acid that's built up, fine, then you can stop there. But if you can keep going, keep going. This is going to build a lot of tension in your muscles. It's gonna tear a lot of fibers over time, which might cause delayed onset muscle soreness the next day, which is fine, and is going to challenge your muscle even further. And then you're gonna apply this to every exercise you do. It doesn't matter what you're doing for that day, you're gonna do this all the time. And what this is gonna do for you, as I've already said, aside from it challenging you further, it's gonna allow you to develop even better mind to muscle connection. Because some people, they just move around when they're exercising or when they're trying to build muscle, and they're not actually squeezing and causing tension on the actual area that they need to. Biceps is generally easier to do, but if somebody's doing, let's say, pull-ups, or they're doing a seated row, or maybe they're doing lateral raises, they don't tend to engage the muscle on its own and don't build up enough intensity in there as much as they could have. So by doing this, it's gonna allow you to get better tension and also allow you to get better mind-to-muscle connection as well. Now I'm gonna have an example template workout down below of what it looks like that you can follow. But again, just like I said for the weight loss phase, do something that works for you do something that you can handle. But roughly after a month or so, you're going to take this uh, template or you're going to take the program that you put together and you're going to make it a little bit harder. And what you're going to do is you're going to add more repetitions or you're going to increase the weight a little bit, which is what I generally do for my clients. And then you're going to repeat the same thing. You're going to repeat the same notions. You could add different types of tempo structures for sure, but just for now, to keep it simple, this is what you're gonna do. It's gonna allow you to be able to get direction. It's gonna force you to, better, to get a better workout and it's gonna get you better at understanding your, your body and your muscles and to get better mind to muscle connection. Now, when it comes to the nutrition side of things, you really need to make sure you dial in your macros and you need to make sure that you're hitting your protein intake. Carbs, you generally wanna have before your workouts Everybody's appetite and everybody's uh, breakdown of foods is a little bit different, but I find for myself when I have carbs, I have oatmeal around an hour and a half or so before I work out, it gives me a great source of energy. It's uh, high in polysaturated carbs. It lasts a bit longer in the body. I really get a good energy uptake from it. That's what I do. Play around with it. It all is gonna come down to how many calories you're intaking at the end of the day and also what your macro setup is for your nutrition and for your calories that you're intaking. But you wanna make sure, again, you have higher protein, next amount is gonna be carbs, and then lower amount of fats. That can change over time. At the end of the day, now, because you're in a muscle building phase, again, you wanna maintain your high protein intake versus every other macro that you're gonna be using as well. And just to add on to that as well, 
you want to be getting anywhere between one gram to two grams of protein per body weight. But for the average person, one gram to two grams is more than enough. It generally is enough to be able to substantiate your muscle growth for recovery and for building as well. And it's literally that simple for you to start getting results. That's literally all it takes. If you start following what I told you in this video, write it down, start implementing it. I guarantee you, you're going to start seeing results a month, two months, even three months from now, and it'll start compounding over time. You'll start getting stronger. You'll start being able to add more exercises. You'll increase your rep count. Your energy will go up. Your weight's gonna go down. You're gonna feel better and stronger. You're gonna feel happier because you don't even realize the amount of mental fortitude and the amount of uptake of positivity that you get when you start implementing exercise in your daily life. And it's gonna make you stronger for you, your family. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna respect yourself more. There's just so much positivity that you're gonna get from this, from putting in a little bit of work. What, maybe three hours a week, three to five hours a week, depending on what your actual workout routine is. And then start incorporating your actual nutrition and eating healthier and treating your body the way it should be treated. It goes a long way. And I promise you, if you start incorporating these in, starting tomorrow or the next day or whenever you start to do it, you will see results down the line and then you won't wanna stop when you see them start coming in. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Again, if you want to get a hold of me, message me on my Instagram. That's where I talk with people. That's where I basically message everybody back. Go there if you want to talk about actually working together and building a specific plan for yourself that's going to get you specifically to your goals and you want something way more detailed that I've given you in this video that's literally specifically for you, which is what I do for my clients online and what I do for my clients in person. I build them something that's specific, tailored, and detailed for them that's going to give them the step-by-step -step approach to be able to get them to the results that they want themselves and also educate them along the way so that they know what to do down the road and there's no questions no ifs no ands no buts just them learning on what they need to do while getting results along the way and if you want to find more info on that again dm me uh, on my instagram page at adzbodyfitness.com message me there and i'll get back to you but other than that i hope you got a lot of value in this video if you want more info go to my instagram page i got a host of different videos on there in terms of uh how to build muscle and techniques you can use but other than that see you guys around